Hey folks, today I'm going to be replacing my brake pads on my 2015 Street Glide Special. One of the first steps I like to take is take the master cylinder cap off because I need to take some of the brake fluid out. When you're compressing back the caliber pistons, it's going to push some of that fluid up. And I know some people don't do that, but I, I like to take the extra step and do it. And plus it gives me an opportunity to take a look at the brake fluid. I actually have a little tool that will test the moisture in the brake fluid. So I'll show that to you as well. So let's take a closer look. As you, can, as you can see, I've already covered everything up because, you know, as you know, brake fluid is, it'll eat through paint. So make sure you cover up your tank and I have lowers and your front fender and so forth. I've already loosened this up. Set that aside. So I'm gonna go ahead and test and see how much moisture I have in my brake fluid. I have a nice little tool here. And just turn that on. And yep, I have too much moisture. Greater than 4%. So I'll leave a link in the description with this tool in case you want to get one or you can just go by you know change it every year two year however you want to do it um, but it's definitely you can tell the difference it's got a brownish look to it versus clear when i put it in there so i'll save that for another video i'm going to take a little bit of uh fluid out here like i mentioned before this is a, a mighty back uh, brake bleeder has a little handheld pump I'll put a link in the description to that. I actually bought this at Harbor Freight. Just be careful not to take out too much. All right, I'm gonna start with the front brakes. I uh, need to go ahead and take the caliber off on both sides. I'm gonna start here on the left side. And so there are some zip ties holding the uh, wheel speed sensor cable and the brake lines together so you want to go ahead and snip those to kind of help you get the brake caliber out of the way once you take it off so just be careful when you're taking these out there's one and there's two there's another one up here but i'm going to leave that one on i think it'll be okay you got two bolts holding the uh, caliber on as well as the speed sensor here. Uh, and that is a 12.10 10 millimeter socket. So like I said before, here's the wheel speed sensor bracket. Uh, just to basically just help hold the, the cable close. Uh, obviously we're not gonna take the wheel speed sensor off. You can pop this out or you can just roll it right back up. You will, if you're wondering like how, which way this goes on, you can see the ABS there that where this clips in. This can pop off if you want it to, like so. Let me give you a closer look. See how it kind of concaves in like that? That's how you want to put it on because it will go either way. But just remember, this is how it went on. And you can just pop it back in however you want to do it. I'm just going to leave it there and then slide it up. <clears throat> this will free up your brake caliber. Just pay attention and make sure you don't uh, bump your uh, fender there. In my case, I think it's a little bit easier because I have a hugger fender. Next, you want to take this caliber screener insert off. You can just use your hands. It's pretty simple. There's a little tab. Just remember when you're putting it back on, there's two tabs at the bottom, one at the top. You can just pop it right on. And if you need to, you can just let it hang. It's not gonna, it's not gonna bother anything. I just wanted to show you one thing. I am switching out from the Harley brakes to the EBC. I've heard a lot of good things about these. Um, this is a second time changing my brake pads. And man, those, the Harley ones are just, throw too much dust, end up squeaking. I don't really like it. Okay, for right now, I'm gonna, Go ahead and press in the caliber pistons. This will allow me to get the new pads in. So just use a screwdriver. Just kind of 
get in there and turn it. And also, like I mentioned before, I have the master, master cylinder, brake master cylinder cap off and you wanna make sure your brake fluid doesn't overflow. And I will be stopping here in a minute to check that. I unfortunately do not have an assistant. I need to pay for one of those. So as you can see, the caliper pistons are, are pretty well flat. And in order to get the pads out, you got a pad pin and a retaining clip for that pad pin. So you just take a flathead screwdriver, pull that out. That's what she looks like. And then this pad pin is a four millimeter socket, Allen wrench, uh, excuse me, Allen socket. And there you have it. Now you can turn this over, should free these up, should fall right out. And as you can see, you got to inspect your uh, pad spring in here. That looks pretty good. But one thing I like to do is clean all this up. Hopefully this doesn't hit the camera. But you get the idea. Just get in there, let it clean it up real well. You know, take a microfiber towel, just clean it up. So as you can see, I got it cleaned up pretty good. You definitely don't want to put uh, new brake pads you know, old dust, you know, clean it up real nice. It, it doesn't take long, it's just an extra step and uh, I, I think it'll be beneficial. And uh, now you wanna put the new brake pads on. Like I said, these are EBCs, never had these before. And you have the brake pad pin hole there. So just put it in the same way. Should just slide right in, pop in like that and do the same or the other side. And now you gotta put in the new pad pin. So <clears throat> we'll talk about that for a second. I know some people may use the old pad pin. The service manual says to put a new one in. So, I mean, I've had these on here for over 20,000 miles. So I'd rather just go ahead and pay the little amount of money to go ahead and put a new pad pin in. I mean, it's to me, it's worth it, but it's up to you however you choose to do it. Have a little notch there. I don't know how well you can see that. It's where your new retaining clip pin will go. I can put it back on the rotor. There we go. And then slide it up. Slide my wheel speed sensor mount back in place. Get your bolt started in there. Do a little bit of wiggling. So we're going ahead and torque the pad pin at 75 to 102 inch pounds. Now your caliber uh, mounting screws. Those are uh, 28 to 38 foot pounds. As you can see here, I went ahead and zip tied uh, wheel speed sensor cable as well as the brake lines. Go ahead and snip those off. And those are back to normal. That completes the left side. I'm gonna go ahead and do the right side caliber, but I'm not gonna show you that. It's the exact same process. It's actually easier because you don't have to deal with the wheel speed sensor. Now you need to put on your caliber screen insert. Now that I got the front brakes on, I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze the front brake pedal. I will add some more brake fluid as I, after I've squeezed it because it's gonna go down into the lines. Just slowly pump that baby. I wanna add a little bit more to the up to the fill line. Make sure you don't over tighten this because it could warp it over time. 
I'm not sure how well you can see that, but here is my rear brake master cylinder. And I'll do the same thing as I did on the front. I'll take a little bit of uh, the brake fluid out just to keep it from overflowing. All right, so as you can see, it's time to go ahead and get to the rear brakes. And I already took my saddlebag off and my side panel. No point in showing you that. You know how to do that. Normally there's a little clip here that holds your wheel speed sensor cable and your brake line. Uh, but obviously I'm, I've lost mine, I guess. A lot of miles, but nothing a zip tie can't fix. Also, right under here, there's a little clip connected to the frame. You want to open that up, freeze those out. Now i got to remove the uh, brake caliber mounting bolts. Uh, this is a 5 16 Allen. I've already broken these. Now when you're bringing this up, it's going to hit the wheel, right? So you need to kind of, as you're bringing it up, kind of turn it. That way it compresses those caliber pistons. So you can then get it off. And then kind of twist this around a little bit. Going to have to do the same thing here is push those pistons in. Just like on the front calipers, there is a retaining clip for your pad pin. Just take that out. Then you got the pad pin that needs to be removed. Again, that's five millimeters. Allen. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up like I did the front. Got the caliber all cleaned up, and as you can see, I'm putting in the new pads. Just make sure those are seated well. And then, just like before, gotta put a new pad pin in. And go ahead and put the new retaining clip on. Flip it back on the rotor. There you go. Ready for the bolts. Again, the pad pin is 75 to 102 inch pounds. Now the rear Mounting screws for the caliber is 43 to 48 foot-pounds. So as you see again, here's the master cylinder for the rear brake. And what you want to do is pump the rear brake pedal. And it'll stiffen up. It doesn't take very long. And that's it. Put the cap back on and good to go. All right, that's it for this install. Took the bike out for a little test ride and the brakes work great, no more squeaking. It's a good opportunity to wash the bike too, in case you might've missed some uh, brake fluid or any excess brake dust that you might have. I think I'm pretty much covered. I appreciate you watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and always rip the ride. See ya.